Today's episode of The Read Pile is brought to you by Audible.com. Get a free audiobook download and a 30-day free trial at www.audibletrial.com slash nerdupmedia. Over 150,000 titles to choose from for your iPhone, Android, Kindle, or MP3 player. I'm Elle, and I'll admit, I use my cats as napkins. And I am the Sussman Rick Sussman, and this whole episode I am going to be enjoying the hell out of some pizza. Oh, and you are watching The Read Pile. It's the week of March 18th, and here's some comic book news you can use. Rick, you bring your pizza down for this? How serious is this? This is about as serious as it gets. Oh no! Okay. So, did you hear about the Batgirl cover? Oh my god. <laughs> Well, being that we're a Wednesday show, and this sort of took place in the last two days, we're, we're probably going to be the last to speak on this. I might even cover it on those two jerks this weekend. We'll see. So, Raphael Albuquerque, who is an artist who we have many books of, he did eight. You reviewed that recently. He did a cover for Batgirl. I think it's issue 41. Going to take place after Convergence. It was a variant for Joker Month. And it featured the Joker with, like, his arm wrapped. I'll probably just pull up the image. If you haven't seen it already, just just Google it. You'll find it on the internet. Or find it instantly on the internet. Unless they have completely wiped it from the internet. Because well, it is just... it's funny that you would mention that. Because now, more people have seen it than ever would have. <laughs> because <laughs> the social justice machine that is Twitter... Mm-hmm. Um... They were pretty pissed about this. They felt that it showed Batgirl in a poor light. Uh, one of the biggest c- critiques and complaints was that the book didn't match the current story that Batgirl was, because we aren't reading Batgirl anymore, but it is very, like, teen-centric now. It's very, yes. very, well, it, it, you could call it hipster, you can call it youth-oriented. It's not something that's on our read pile anymore. Yeah. I did not really see the harm in a variant cover that has nothing to do with the comic. Um, having a... It's all, it happens all the time. And it, this particular variant cover has to deal with the Joker. It's an homage to the Killing Joke, one of the most gut-wrenchingly brutal stories of all time. Um, but you know what? We don't even have to worry about it anymore because we as consumers do not get a chance to decide whether or not this was a cool variant because due to flame wars and people getting death threats and all this other insanity, Raphael Albuquerque, the artist, asked DC if they would please not print the cover, and it is now dead. It's not even that, though. He... I thought he had this whole thing, like, well, oh, I had nothing to do with it. The, the writer, the, the writer Cameron Stewart, yeah. who recently had to take to Twitter to defend his book because they had a transgender uh, villain... And he took to Twitter almost instantly, basically saying, and I, I'm, I'm not going to quote, I'm going to paraphrase here, he did not say these exact words, I can't pull them up, but essentially that he did not approve of this cover in any way, shape, or form, and that he felt it was harmful to the integrity of his story. Be it whether you believe that or you don't believe that, that's what he said. And again, I'm paraphrasing, I'm not quoting. It's important, because that's part of the reason why everyone's so bent out of shape, is they are assuming direct quotes, which there aren't any. I'm mad for one reason and one reason. I know this is usually your time to rant, but yeah. this week I'm the angry nerd boy. I'm mad for one reason and one reason only. I am a consumer. I have hundreds of thousands of comics. My ability to decide whether or not a book does well is based upon whether or not... not I'm not writing comics. I wish I was. I'm certainly not drawing comics. You wish you were. Your art is pretty good. Um, we get to buy comics. No, I've seen it. It's good. Go we get to buy comics. Mm-hmm. If we don't get to buy comics, if we don't get to vote with our dollar, our voice isn't heard. And that's why I'm disappointed. Would you have, would you have bought that cover? I would have in a heartbeat. But guess what? I would never... Never wrote... Like, I wouldn't... Okay. I would not read it. I can't stand the new Batgirl. I think it's horrific. Our opinions. Yeah. And... I would have solely bought it just for the cover because I have read Batgirl. I understood the cover. 
it was for people that have read Batgirl, that knew of all the past stories. It had a lot to do with that. And I'm so I'm just sick and tired of people don't that do not read comics thinking that they can control comics. No, you can't have it. You can't have it there. I'm gonna see it. You're not reading it. You know what? I'm completely offended by certain things, but guess what? I just won't go read it. I'm just not gonna go watch that movie. I avoid the situation, but I'm not gonna control everybody. Now, if it's physically harming me or somebody else, or if it's against race or... If it's know, something really something, outlandish. Something, yeah, then I understand. But this is just, it was just a comic and there was a lot more to it. It wasn't that he's like gutting this girl because he hates Which, women. Coincidentally, <laughs> when, when in Batgirl issue 13, they did a second print because the first print had the Joker face on it. Yeah. In the second print on the cover, Barbara is in fact gutted. Like she's been <laughs> splayed out. She's launched, she's pressed well, up against the tombstone. Uh, but, there to been clarify, I'm not saying that it's because he hates women. Like, I hate women. Women suck. Uh, no, it's Barbara Gordon that he doesn't like. And <laughs> well, it's, it's her. Well, yeah, it's but yes. It's to harm, not her directly. It's to harm Batman and Batman family and Gordon and everybody. And, There's and, a lot more to it. And nobody ever wants to see everything else. And nobody ever wants to hear the whole story. They just want to say, you know what? You're offending me. I'm gonna make a big hubbub, and then you gather all these other people that don't even know what's going on, but they well, want well, to be part on, of let me, it. Well, hang on. Let me pause you real quick. <laughs> a lot of the people who were voicing their dissent on the cover were long-term fans, but you know what? A lot of the people who are voicing their pleasure of the cover are also long-term fans. Here's the simple truth: you're never gonna please everyone a hundred percent of the time. We all know this. It would have been nice for us to have the opportunity to decide, as consumers, do we want this thing? But a vocal minority made their presence felt, and you know, good on them for that. They got their they got their agenda out, they got their, their book out, uh, removed, so I, they got their job done. I just think it's disappointing that we don't get to have our voices heard now, because we would have bought that cover. I, ho I was hoping they were gonna make a poster out of it, or a shirt or something, it was so cool, but. Yeah, I mean, it was a wink to the Batgirl I used to read. It was from before the reboot, that whole story. It was, it was from it the Killing Joke, yeah, it was from the 80s. It was, it was for the fans. It was for the long-term fans. A and variant. We, we don't get that. We don't get it. We don't get it. And I'll, I'll correct myself, yes, there, there were people, there are always people that have there's always both sides. You know, and they had reasons behind it, but unfortunately, what I always end up seeing is the millions and millions of people that have absolutely no clue what they're talking about <laughs> that just pile on top of everybody else. And I don't all know you it's see millions, but yes. No, I'm just saying you just see all the idiocy just covering up and then you just lose track. And this is why nobody knows how to debate. <laughs> I'm just saying. Like, they need to bring it back into schools and... <laughs> okay, okay, okay. We're getting way off, folks. Of I think it's time. We got our... We, See, we, no, this is what happens on the internet. You lose track and you just go we've crazy. Made, we've made our points. Are you ready to move on and review I some books? I need to. All I'm... right, let's go. Let's go. Let's... I'm for comic book reviews. Once again, I have three. Okay, so... Think of this one. Outcast. It is issue seven. Really getting sick and tired of this comic because I want to stop reading it. I really, really, really want to stop reading it because uh, part of me is like, let's go, let's go, let's go. I want to make it go a little quicker. But just enough happens in every issue that I gotta read the next one gotta read the next one, so on and so forth, and right now what's going on is basically Kyle is having to suck it up. He's taking this power that he has to help all these possessed individuals and cleanse them of the demons, and the pastor that he's helping is starting to lose faith. So. 
you're starting to see where he's having to step up and help him be strong. And now you got the devil is present. It's actually present. He is here. He, or something that is supposed to be him, some type of a demon. And it's interesting. It's not the most wonderful storyline ever. But it's enough that I can't stop reading it. <laughs> so, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if I should recommend it or not. But, hey, it's Kirkman. And if you like Kirkman, you might as well, right? Sure. That, that's what I thought, and now I can't put it down. So, <laughs> next up, a surprising one. Well, it's not surprising if you've been seeing my reviews, but it's surprising to me in an overall factor. The unbeatable squirrel girl. It's surprising because I've never known of a Marvel book that I could really like. And I like it. I've related this before. This is repeating myself. It, if you like Harley Quinn and her current stuff right now, you would like this. You would. Because it's quirky. And yes, it has some serious things that are going on. She's got to protect the world. She is having to fight Galactus. It's going to be pretty ridiculous, I think. <laughs> We're getting there, but she keeps getting stopped. She keeps having to stop and save people from this and that and all these random things. And she's like, but I gotta save the world, guys. I gotta go, you know, and she takes off. And it's finally getting to that point where she has to save the world. Is she? I don't know. It's pretty ridiculous. The whole freaking thing is ridiculous and just her attitude and how carefree and quirky she is. I don't know what's going to happen because, once again, I'm going to relate it to Harley Quinn. Things like that happen and then something ridiculous happens and everything is back to normal. Well, normal. Again. And I'm okay with that. I like that. It's the fun thing on my read pile. I like it and I don't mind having another one. Now I have a DC quirky and a Marvel quirky, and I never thought that would ever happen, and it did. <laughs> but my pick of the week, and surprise, I know I'm not really, well, okay, you know what it is. <laughs> Alex and Ada, what issue is this now? 13, <gasps> oh, unlucky 13. It's really sad. Oh my god. Okay, the world is crashing down on them. It's finally here. They are, uh, they are really, he, oh my god. Okay, so Alex, is he made the true sacrifice. You'll see. <laughs> you need to read it. He made his final decision about her, and he has decided what he's going to do. He's made his choice. He can't turn back. He can't turn back now. <laughs> he's made his choice. And the Did he make his choice, L? He did! He did! And it's... Oh. I really wish these issues were longer. And I hate... I hate Jonathan. <laughs> I hate you. For not making it. The opinions just, of the angry nerd girl L are hers and hers alone and do not represent, represent those of the read I just want a couple more pages! Or Nerd Up Media as a whole. Jonathan or, Luna is a friend of Nerd Up Media and we love him. <laughs> you know, I, I'm just gonna suggest something, you know. I would buy it if it was a weekly. The opinions of the angry... <laughs> If you're not reading this, you need to. Just the idea of these two, and just the, the whole world of uh, sentient beings and stuff. It's just, uh, it's insane. Anyway, we're gonna move on and see what Rick has to say. Hey! What? Hey! Oh! Right, 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 right. Um. Wipe your hands off before you touch the comic. I know that! It's really good pizza. Well, thank you, L, for those uh, reviews. Whatever. Time, time for me to eat my pizza. Um, 
Hello. Uh, I only had three books this week, um, which is funny because last week I said any good reviewer always has more than three. But, conjecture pizza. So, let's move on. Satellite Sam! This is number 12. We are wrapping it up. We are getting down to the get down. It is almost over. Matt Fraction, Howard Chaykin have fin are all but finished with their story. And you know what? My biggest critique of the last issue was that nothing really happened. <laughs> There's lots happening. We had a lot go down in issue 12, and I am very excited to see what else is next on the agenda. We only have a couple of more issues left, and I I'm actually going to be very sad when this ends, just because it's been a really fun ride. Um... It's kind of cool to see what happens, or what could have happened, in this 1950s-esque television drama, behind-the-scenes goodness. I would recommend checking out the trade if you haven't yet. I really loved this book, and we're not quite done yet, but we're getting close. So, you know, you can join me. Maybe you can catch up, and we can trade notes. It could be fun. Okay, a little bit of a setup. When I was really getting into books, c collecting, I would always gravitate towards the really oddball stuff. Things like um, weird war stories or strange um, adventures, things like that. Things that just were kind of bizarre books that didn't have a whole lot of grounded reality. Because, hey, they're comic books and they don't need that. They can just be whatever. And who cares? Because it's comics. And... There's a large fluffball that is trying to join me on the futon of comic book reviews here. Come on up, fluffball. Come on. No? Not right, good. Oh, there it is. Fluffball achieved. Really? The whole the whole time I'm doing my reviews? You're going to stand right on that comic, huh? Oh, that's great. No, this is making for a good review. All right. <laughs> Just in case you don't believe me. Hi. Say hi. Actually, this bleeds in perfectly because at the end of the, she's she's an issue. This is Peggy Poo Poo, Fatty. Yeah. There we go. After that cat interlude, we have strange sports tales, strange sports stories. Pardon me. Um, <laughs> Vertigo Comics re-released this. It's a four-issue miniseries. This um, works actually with my last issue. We'll talk about my pick of the week and why a cat being on top of that book actually works out fine. But Strange Sports Stories, as I mentioned, is a really silly, ridiculous, crazy book. It should be up here by now, so that's okay. Um, and what happens during it is, or what, what happens within it are, here's a bunch of really crazy, awkward sports that don't really exist. One's like killer dodgeball. Another one is like there's a kraken under the ice of an ice hockey game. And then the last one is actually really beautiful and it's by Ivan Brandon who also writes Drifter and a couple other books that I've been reading. And basically the, the short of it is even after the end of the world there will be baseball. And I love that. As a, as a guy who loves baseball it was really it was really a great book. But I've wasted enough time between cat interludes, setting up books. It's time to get right to it. Let's spin the graphic up. Let's get moving here. We have our pick of the week, and it is Invisible Republic. And holy crap, is this book good. Oh my god. Have you read Transmetropolitan? No? Well, you should. It's amazing. Do you know about my history? Well, you should. It's not as amazing as Transmetropolitan, but there's some good stuff there. For instance, I am the son of two newspaper reporters. So, when I read this book, I immediately felt that Transmet vibe. That, that newspaper revo reporter writing a story about something that has already happened kind of sense. The, the way the premise is set up, it's a little coincidental, but it's okay. And I absolutely fell in love with this book. Every now and again, you read a book kind of on a whim... And the next thing you know, you are absolutely in love with it. And the best thing about it is, when you flip to the end, um, you're greeted by uh, Gabriel Hardman and Karina, uh, I want to say, uh, Beckcho, but I might be mispronouncing that, and for that I'm sorry. And they want to say, uh, uh, do you think it would be too irritating if we sidebar in each issue that highlighted one of our pets? Yes, at the beginning of their volumes here, the first thing they're going to do is talk about one of their rabbits, and I thought that was beautiful, because, as you can see, we here on the Read Pile are fans of large, fluffy animals diving all over our things, too. But that, amongst other reasons, is why Invisible Republic 
was my pick of the week. For you, our loyal followers of The Read Pile, we have an awesome offer from Audible.com. Audible is offering a free audiobook download with a free 30-day trial to give you the opportunity to check out their awesome service. You can download some really great books like The Hobbit, the unabridged version from Tolkien. You can download Divergent, Lean In, lots of great stuff to check out. To download your free audiobook today, go to audibletrial.com slash nerdupmedia. Again, that's audibletrial.com slash nerdupmedia for your free audiobook. That's this week for the Read Pile. Oh, uh, Who are we thanking? Uh, uh, Domino's. Um, uh, I, I, I guess we're not really thanking anyone. God, we're not really thanking anyone this week. We are congratulating... What? Are you okay? <laughs> you, like, I don't know, ruptured something. Um... <laughs> We are we are congratulating our yeah. friends uh, at Galvin Leatherworks. Uh, first, Charlie uh, announced his engagement, and then a couple weeks later, while uh, at uh, in Indiana for I believe SuperCon, I believe that's what that was, while uh, displaying his wares, uh-huh. none other than freaking Aquaman himself, Jason Momoa, came to Charlie's booth and hung out with the man for a couple of minutes. We posted about it on our Twitter, on our Facebook. We're very, very proud of our buddy Charlie. Mm, frack you! <laughs> <laughs> unfair. <laughs> it's been a bad week for the angry nerd girl. She's very upset. You want me to get you, like, a smoothie or something? Don't forget Charlie. <laughs> See you guys next week. <laughs>